Welcome back to Dreamin' Does Gaming. Dreamin' to your playing more of the Pale Beyond. I'm gonna continue in. There's a neat um, save and continue branch with this, where you can actually kind of go back and play previous weeks and stuff, which I thought was pretty neat. Uh, we can open our journal. Nothing really to discover here. So let's leave. Um. Nothing too exciting here. We're supposed to go up, but I like to check out what's going on down here. You never know when you're going to meet anybody. Yeah. All right. Nothing here. Um, that's my cabin. Head up to the top. Oh, wow. There is a lot of ice here right now. Okay, so this is where we're at. That's where we need to get to. Eh? Okay, mouse. Don't be crazy. So it looks like we can enter the four castle. Ooh, we can pet the dogs. You pat its back. Rub its chin. Offers your its paw something that we'll be doing a lot of. I don't see the captain, but we can take the quests. Captain Hunt appears to be absent. His chair is unoccupied. Best get started. The whole room shudders. We're stuck in the ice, aren't we? What in the... Well, I was worried about this. Look at that ice. We could be trapped for a while. Strong pressures, as if we didn't have enough bother. Well, no need monkeying around. Let's get to work. Where's Hunt? I'll grab him. I'm sure he felt it too. Shaw, check the boiler room. I'm sure the mole man has problems of his own. Not to worry, everyone. We'll be free and moving again before you know it. Back to work. All right. Head down to the boiler room. Talk to Kasha. Officer Shaw, what happened? Ships come to a stop. I almost flung my camera into the wall. We didn't hit anything, did we? Um, we're trapped in some ice. We'll need to break loose to get moving again. Well, let's see. Let's hope we can do that sooner rather than later. Trapped in the ice, though. That would make for a good photograph. Of course it would. Um... Okay, I don't know what my mouse is doing today. Grimly. Ship stuck then. If you're looking for Hunt, you just missed him. Have you checked the boiler room? Not yet. Hammond's probably pissed off, I imagine. I'm going to check with my brother. Makes sense. Um, one thing we can go do is go... To the coal bunker, grab some coal. Now that we can do that, we can enter the boiler room. Approach the two men. I, if you, I made any errors, I'd tell you it's secured. Don't you worry. They notice you. Impressive machine, this boiler. I shall keep us steady, no doubt. Be grateful, we have it. I'm ensuring that the boiler was not damaged in the sudden commotion. And if I told you it was, you'd already know. I'm not in the business of making mistakes. I know that if the furnace goes, we go down with it. Yes, but you're only one man, with just a pair of engineers as assistants. Just looking at the number of valves, this seems far too much for you to handle. Maybe your bloody benefactor should have considered that. I've gotten used to it by now. It will hold, trust me. I will. Well, I will have to, won't I? I don't fancy staying on the ship any longer than necessary. It's imperative that we break free from the ice as quick as possible. <clears throat> Hammond eyes you, a grimace on his face. First mate's here, but where's the other one who got us in this bloody mess? He's a difficult one to find. Indeed he is. I have a suspicion as to where he may be now. We're on a ship, an unmoving one at that. 
man cannot simply disappear. If he's anywhere, he must be in this cabin. You can find the man, give him an earful on my behalf. Can't do it myself, too busy keeping us alive. It's true. Templeton gives a nod. I believe you and I both owe our captain a visit, Shaw. But you should call the crew for dinner first. Routine is important, especially now. Not before we feed this furnace. Mind grabbing some coal from the bunker, Shaw? Are you afraid of dirty hands like Mr. Templeton over here? Hmm. Well, we already grabbed it, so. Are you just going to keep standing there or give us something to burn? Yeah, we'll feed the furnace. Here we go. Done. I don't think we can do it again. Keep her lit, Captain. Oh, we have the uh, accordion guy again. You merge mid deck to find the crew ready in cells for dinner despite the dice. Some seem nervous, others as if nothing has changed at all. Grab some tin food. I just want to go check up here, see if there's anything, any people we can talk to. No, it doesn't really look like it. Oh, Cordell can. Officer Shaw, it would appear we've stopped. Curious. Hunt was warmed to this pathway, was he not? Even I can see the risks, and yet an experienced sailor carried on. wonder what goes through that man's head. I agree. What's on the menu this week? Well, here we go. Okay, call the crew for dinner. The crew have their meal. The dinner is shared. The crew returns to their post. The hammocks are unfurled in prep for the evening. Can't help but notice that it's still bright light outside. You didn't see him either? He didn't pass by, but his cabin door was locked when I checked. Slippery bastard. What are you thinking, Hunt? Um, the same thing, really. No sign of Hunt, I take. Mr. Temple passed by, but wasn't exactly willing to take questions. I don't think he ever is. Hm. Well, there's something... Keep it up, lads. We'll set ourselves right in no time. Ah, Shaw. I just saw Templeton entering the captain's cabin. Seems Hunt's hold himself up inside. If he had a word with our good captain, he'd be willing to lend a hand. You would hope so. Being captain and all. Hm. Well, there he is. Hmm. I was informed he was in here. Where he could he have hidden himself? He has to be in here, check under his desk. I really doubt he's cowering beneath the table, Shaw. Har. The captain's laugh rings out from behind the door. The captain watches you both, his head swaying as he chuckles to himself. You are a surprisingly difficult man to get a hold of, Hunt, seeing that it's your ship. I know it will. Hunt's eyes turn to you. I believe you two are already acquainted. How long have you been drinking? I don't suppose you, suppose you care to join. Hunt shakes his hip flask as he holds it out, whiskey sloshing and spilling from the top. And what of you, Shaw? Can't tempt you with some sweet neckered? Um, no drink. You don't care to humor me this once? Ah, oh, well, you're lost. You intend to offer drinks at a time like this? This ship, your ship, is trapped in ice. It's my ship now, is it? What do you expect me to do, get the shovels out? Um, you mean this isn't your ship? Bought at an auction, not by myself. Imagine that, captain of a private vessel, and I don't even own it. Pathetic. Mr. Hunt, captain. If you're not fit to stand, then you should retire for the night. So I will stand in your stead and we can continue in the morning. And abandon my duty? No captain would do that as, do that as a fit captain, wouldn't you agree? Well, not you. Shaw, isn't that right? What do you think makes for a good leader? <laughs> Sobriety for start. Um, hmm. 
making the difficult choices, choices nobody else wants to make. You think you could live with yourself? They all act like the choice is the difficult part. The choice is easy, Shaw. Instinctual. It's not being able to sleep after. That's what they never prepare you for. But I'm serious. To you, what makes a good leader? You don't have the time for it. In a word, then. Hmm. Understanding control or willpower? Um, definitely not control. Um, understanding, really. Ability to adapt to your crew to understand the individual needs that make the whole. Understand what needs to be done. Understand your limitations. The top one. Adapt to your crew. Understand the individual needs that make up the whole. And if those needs conflict, all well and good. I think you can bend and twist and please everyone. You think you can balance that? Scorn man one day, then appease him the next. Do you think that balance is out? Which is he more likely to remember? Speaking in platitudes will do no good. Good leader is something more than a single rule you were told to follow. When you see one, you just know. You've wasted enough time pining philosophical. Oh, my apologies. I'll ask the real questions. Shaw, look at where we are. You honestly think we're going to survive this? I have no doubt we will. Well, I suppose someone has to carry faith with them. The captain laughs. Shaw, nobody knows we're out here. That doesn't leave this room. No, no. We're not want to upset your employer. Our benefactor? We all want to be paid after this, don't we? Enough. If you weren't fit to lead this expedition, you should not have agreed to it. You, you shouldn't be... None of us should be here. Oh, Kurt paid handsomely to join. You're just a botanist sent to keep an eye on me, our doctor. Ha. And then there's me. What are we actually searching for? Hunt chuckles, gestulating mockingly with his hands. Ghosts. Templeton opens the door. Captain needs his rest. We'll discuss this once he's out of mine. So we're chasing dead men. A clear mission changes nothing. Only right to tell you. Go on, Shaw. I'll be right here. And he has fallen asleep. Lovely. Captain Hunt needs his sleep. I fear the pressure of command have greatly affected him. You should find some rest yourself. The crew have their commands. Clear your head. We'll continue on in the morn. You would think Hunt would be taking action time like this. Instead, he's squirreled within his office. An odd one. Agreed. Um, no one else to talk to? No. Okay. So we can end the day. Or the week, I should say. You wait to find a room awash with green. There's a loud banging on your door and a familiar face speaks from behind the wood. Shaw, are you in there? Uh, Hammond, what's going on? Why is everything green? Never mind the green. The boiler's in serious trouble. Pumps need manned, and we need to stop the whole system overheating. I don't need to tell you if the furnace goes, we go. Lead the way, but we don't have a moment to spare. Right, let's move. We need to find the captain now. Kasher rushes up, holding her camera right as the ship rumbles. What's happening? Are we going under? Not if we can help it. Out of the way. Safe to go up top, right? That aura. It's a shot I can't miss. She steps back before snapping a photo of the ensuing chaos. The lights of the aurora flicker over the pale ice. It's very nice. Animals are barking furiously at the green that has invaded their territory. Oh, they don't like it, eh? Calm, Stanberry. What is happening to the ship? Nothing I cannot fix. Don't fret. I shan't stop you, Mr. Hammond. He knows what he's doing. I have no doubt of that. You needn't comfort me. If you're focusing on the task at hand. Done. Nothing. Visibly perturbed, he takes a moment to compose himself. Even the tub is empty. Why would you expect him to be in the tub? Not important. This doesn't make sense. The man seems 
barely fit to crawl himself into bed earlier. What? Hammond turns to you. Alright, Shaw. Cam's missing. You're in charge. Good to hear. Don't get a big head about it. Yes, indeed. The crew are no doubt waking at this moment. They're no doubt scared, confused. It's your duty to keep them calm and maintain order. Hammond glares at Templeton. Shaw's job to get down to the boiler room now. We've already wasted enough time looking for that hunt. If you storm down to that room, all you'll be doing is inciting a panic. We need to calm the fears of the crew, maintain an air of focus. Lie to them as the ship goes down? Not at all. Instead, to assure them we know how to remedy this matter. You do know how to ma how to remedy this matter, Mr. Hammond. I. We need to be quick. I don't have time to worry about some stupid sailor's feelings. We've got a bloody ship to save. Well, it's as he said. Officer Shaw is in charge. The decision is yours. Can't waste any time. The boiler won't wait for us. Fine. I'll keep the crew at bay then. On. Don't worry about him. Let's go. Yep. Kind of how I feel. Ship first, crew second. No ship, no crew. As more of the crew notice you and him descending below, the whispers begin. Soon, the crew pick up pace, walking directionless and with hurried footsteps. Kurt approaches. Boiler trouble, I take it? I'll lend a hand. Not when you're walking with that cane, you're not. I have enough strength to go tell the crew to hit the lower decks as many as possible. Let's go, Shaw. Time to save this blasted ship. Ascend the ladder. As you can see, the brothers trying to get the door open. Trying to get in? Same. Door stuck. Pull harder. You need to get in there. They need to keep the furnace light. Metal door unsticks. Grimly looks to you before darting off into the darkness. Where's that bloody idiot off running off to? Sound the alarm. Bloody hells. Let's get moving. Oh. Enter the boiler room. As you enter, and Hammond's engineering team are hard at work. Larger the two engineers loses grip of their valve as steam begins to shoot out, causing Hammond to dash forward. Watch it! Hammond tackles the engineer to the ground, saving him from a nasty steam burn. Made it just in time. What's the word, Chief? Keep those valves pumping. We need to avoid a water hammer, or we won't be making it off the ship. Shaw! The rest of the crew aren't here. Grab a valve and start turning. Done. Gra grab a valve and begin turning, trying all you can to keep the water at bay. Pump? Feel the ache in your muscles as you continue to push the valve, keeping the pressure at bay. Furnace rumbles and sputters, hemorrhaging fuel. Keep turning, doing the best you can to keep the pressure at bay. Could be at this for hours. Where's the rest of the crew? Brought help? Furnace rumbles and sputters. Get me coal and turn those valves. Okay. Um, we don't have coal. Valve, valve. Oh, can we get more? Oh, yeah, we can. Alright. Who do we have here? And where's the one arm guy? You guys can get... They get to work. Um... Put two Johns on the valve, because he's huge. They grab the valve. Um, yeah, so this is an interesting thing that we have to do, try to get these guys all in here. Uh, Tucker, there you go. Enough hands on the boiler, you begin to fight back the potential water hammer. Someone's going to have to hold the furnace in place. Ooh, this one sounds like it could hurt. Let's go, cavity. Cavity approaches the furnace. The room shakes. Water hammer! Jettis steam paints June. Subsides as they writhe in anger. Agony. Such as wounded, scurvy, or frostbite, that person will be invalid and 
unable to work. You keep up the work, shifting the valves until the boiler has finally calmed. The ship is saved, you won't be sinking today. As the crew says to the wounded June, you feel your muscles tense. You fall back, collapsing from exhaustion. As you lay back, you can hear a pair of panicked voices. Where the hell is Captain Hunt? He's gone. Okay. Well. Yeah, we don't have enough fuel, so we're getting nothing today. Which kind of sucks. Um... So I guess that's it. And that's what we have. Minus 10 loyalty. Temperance is saved from sinking. The aura passes, leaving only bright light and white. Week 4. One week at Temperance Camp. Okay, well, just give it a minute here, because that, that was a lot. A lot of different things happened right there. Um, but that's kind of how the game works, right? There's going to be throwing ev events at you, and you have to try and get um, the crew to go to the right spots, etc. I don't know if there's, you know, a difference between who goes to what place, um, but I guess we'll explore that. I know in other games there are, you know, some people are better at other things than others, so I'll just kind of do what makes the most sense. You are alone in the captain's cabin. Out across deck can be heard the commotion of the crew. Word is spread quickly that Captain Hunt is missing. Temple Tin slips in through the door. Shaw. Uh, still no sign of Hunt. Afraid not. Hunt is still missing. Hm, yep. He isn't alone in that regard. Max crew decreased. Sanders, Sparrow, and Gren are also unaccounted for. Okay. As is a sizable food and fuel supply, and one of the larger lifeboats. Lovely. Shaw, you and I are not naive. It seems quite clear what has been ha what has happened. How's the rest of the crew? They're confused, scared. Former captain's no longer with us. You understand what that means, Shaw? Um, that would be Captain Shaw now, I take it? Not quite yet, and you captain must be selected by the crew. As first mate, you have the most clear argument to take that role. How do I argue for that role? Your presence in the face of Hunt's ab absence is an argument in itself. We'll hold a vote as soon as possible. That carpenter grimly. He's still loyal to Hunt, and many of the sailors will follow his vote, if not all. Though I can assure you have the vote of myself and the scientists. Kurt and his crew would like to support you as well. I'm unsure where the engineers will side. They're like the loyal to their pay. Jume is still recovering from the steambirds, which may end up working to our favor. And the civilians are a mystery. But I believe when all said is done, we'll just about make the vote. Clearly, I've given this a lot of thought. Of course, it's vital to remain aware of the crew's intention. They're waiting outside, Shaw. They're scared, they don't know where to turn. You and I both understand the importance of maintaining decorum. Though times seem dire, remember, there's a rescue ship on its way. Even if the temperance fails, we have still a potential escape. 35 weeks. <laughs> the ship will arrive at Viscount Island in 35 weeks from now. That's not a short time. <laughs> 35 days. Okay, 35 weeks. Wow. We should focus on surviving that long. That's all we need to do, Captain. I understand we can hold out for that long. Indeed, that's all we need. Another 35 weeks, Captain. Keep it in mind. Here, you should have this. Templeton presents you with a fancy looking hat. Hunt's hat. He left it behind in this um, quarter. Tell us. Tells us what we need, doesn't it? Guess we can take the hat. The commotion outside grows. 
I choose to willfully observe reality. I suggest you do the same, Captain. Scientist refrains for a moment. What is it? I think it's best we declare that the captain and missing crew are dead. There's no need for us to complicate things any further. I won't lie to them, Templeton. Leaders lie. Get used to it. The crew are waiting for you on deck. Last place he saw Captain Hunt. There's still drops of whiskey. Frozen. Hunt's ledger is gone. Well, I guess that is all we're doing then, is addressing the crew. Okay. The hushed voices become more distinct as you make your way back out in the open air. You notice the absence of June. The crew members notice you and stop. Their attention ripples across the deck. Attention! be clear now that Captain Hunk is, Hunt is no longer serving his post. As such, we should vote in the new captain. I nominate Officer Shaw for the role, the clear choice is first mate. And what of Hunt? I do not see him among us, do you? I don't see a body either. He's still out there. We don't know what happened. Something we can discover for now, someone has to take the reins of command. All in favor of Officer Shaw, as we start the voting process. abstaining okay interesting loyal to you oh nice that's nine five junior loyal to hunt abstaining abstaining and Kasha Ah, well, that was very close. Interesting. You've been confirmed as the captain of the expedition. Well, you guys have it. Shaw shall be acting captain from this point forward, acting in Captain Hunt's stead. The crowd looks to you expectantly as Templeton gives you a knowing nod. A moment passes in the cold as they await your next words, curious murmurings scattering between the crew. <clears throat> Captain Hunt is no longer with us, or to those that don't know me, I'm Robin Shaw. As they look to you, it's not long before the obvious questions spill from the crew's mouth. Where's Captain Hunt? He abandoned us. I'm not going to say he's dead, because we don't know that. Captain Hunt abandoned us. You notice know, Templeton's eyes widen. Whispers begin to roll throughout the crowd. He appears to left this expedition along with three missing crew and one of our lifeboats. Silence hangs in the air. As long as we keep our wits, there's no reason we can't survive this. The crowd begins to bubble up once more, with more and more questions coming to the surface. Members of the crew start speaking one by one, with questions thrown your way in quick succession. How are we supposed to survive out here? Is help coming? What about our pay? Will we still be paid? Alright. Our immediate priority. Is to find... Hmm. Is to wait it out until either we were freed from the pack or help arise, find additional food, current supplies will only take us so far trapped in the ice, or prepare ourselves for land navigation, the ship is unreliable place to remain. Find additional food. Current supplies will only take us so far trapped in the ice. I know this isn't what we signed up for, Stick with me and I will see us through. What of those lost, Captain? A memorial service will be held once the ship is freed. A memorial service will be held once we make land. Yeah, once we make land. Understood. Well, you heard the Captain. Get to it. The crowd dissipates, returning to their roles aboard the ship. You pass Templeton. He glares at you. I told you, I won't lie to them. 
If we can't be honest with each other, then what chance do we have? I hope you're right. Looks up at your new hat. Suits you. <laughs> Great. Okay. There's Kurt. Let's go talk to him. Shaw! Or should I say Captain Shaw? That hunt. Didn't seem the type to just leave his crew behind. Still, no good dwelling. Have confidence you'll take up the mantle well. You have any experience leading expeditions? I've never captained a vessel, if that's what you mean. But the navigator has just as much responsibility to lead, in that sense I have plenty. No, oh, we don't have fish to feed them. Alright, let's talk to Cordell. I suppose congratulations are in order. Hope you're prepared for the task at hand, Captain Shaw. Did you see Hunt last night? If I had, I would have said as much. If I were to wager, I'm certain that someone aboard the ship has, it's unlikely the Forkrail will leave a landlocked ship without being spotted. And we'll pet all the dogs. Because they're cute. <laughs> we'll head down first, just to make sure we have everything. Anything in here? Pump flood water from the lower decks. Okay, there's no... Nothing's flooded currently. Oops. Oh, man. Just pick up basically everything that we can, right? She needs fuel for the week. Now let's talk to him. Captain, now are you? As long as you aren't in my way any more than Hunt was, I'm happy. How's the boiler keeping? Well, we aren't dying. That's a relief. Don't know how well the furnace will hold. I'll keep her going as long as you aren't distracting me. Perfect. It's really all that matters. Okay, so this is where we can send people to do things. All right, well, let's go to the cabin. There should be no hesitation, Shaw. You're a captain now, and you must carry out that authority instantly. It's best we carry out the daily routine as normal, show that you're capable in that role. You should take the day's request immediately before seeing to our resources. Agreed. You saw the duties of the captain of him firsthand while serving Hunt. You're acting captain now. It's time to take up that mantle. A line is already forming at the door. No surprise given the circumstances. Take them as you may, Captain. Junior, Hammond, Kurt, and Cordell. Let's go with the sailor first. Shaw. The ice looks unbudging, doesn't it? Seemed that way, yes. The crew seemed to think so. I think if we don't intervene, the temperance will never get freed. You're suggesting breaking the ice? I can assure you that won't work. I'm not. They are. No intervention is going to break up the ice enough to free the ship. Putting others to work on that is simply a waste of manpower. Maybe. They're scared, though. Worried. They just want to feel like they tried something. Templeton's right. Can't waste the crew on a pointless task. In this case, I think that's okay. Ouch. Minus five loyalty, but we get that loyalty back with him. Understood. Best not to fall, sell false hope. Minus six decorum. It only leads to more disappointment in the future. I'll see you for dinner, Shaw. Don't forget the hoosh pot needs fed. Kurt and Cordell. Captain, I brought the kennel master with me. This is something you will both want to hear. Strong suspicion on what the matter is. I was planning to speak with Captain on it myself. Fortunate happenstance, then. Captain, I know these conditions well. I've seen them before. Any idea of temperance being freed from the ice any time is a pipe dream. We need to press on. We need to become aware of our new environment. Trust me, Captain. We'll be living off it for quite some time. What of you, Cordell? Do you agree? Indeed. The dog sleds will need to be exercised regularly, and there's no better way than engage in hunting. 
They're quite lucky despite the circumstances. Now is the peak time for hunting and navigation. Navigation? Traversing the ice may be a possibility in the future. We need to be prepared for that. Bridges 5 out here, we need to know what lies ahead. These are uncharted territories, Captain. We have no idea where we are. The current rations are not set to last forever either. Send any hunting party to me as you please. My dogs and I will ensure their survival. The same sentiment for myself and any scouting teams. If you wish the great unknowns to be braved and charted, I'm your man. We need to know what lies ahead. Keep looking forward. Saving that boiler was only the start of our troubles. Have you seen the state of this bloody ship? Certainly seen better days. She's bleeding in the lower decks. I believe the older Stoke is attempting to rectify that. We need to stockpile as much fuel as we can. If the furnace runs out by the end of the week, we die. If we spend too long on the ship, we die. If we don't stockpile enough fuel for the winter, we die. Aye. <laughs> Give me some coal, get it in the furnace. Grady's not wrong that coal bunkers are only source of fuel for the time being. Till we procure alternatives, we should assign crew to shoveling whenever possible. For dinner, you should see to sending off the first sledding team. I also believe it's time you gave our doctor a good visit. We'll still have wounded from the night of the Ohura. Their wounds need to be attended before they're fit to work. I don't I need to remind you of this, but we need every hand available. Don't be afraid of signing my team for some manual labor. They'll complain, but they will work. Mrs. Gloss, you did seem familiar. I finally placed you. You have, have you? Oh, this is the uh, gymnast scout. Yes, I remember seeing you compete. Soren Kipler, you were quite the gymnast. That's where I see you in this line of work. Not too many gymnasts carry long careers. You did quite well when I saw you at the Summer Games. I don't recall winning. Okay. Ah, so this is where we can send out scouts. Okay. Well, we might as well send them out. There we go. Ooh. And we can hunt. Because we found some um, stuff. Okay. Well, we can send out send out them to get a couple seals and we uh, Tashi and Tucker are marked down to hunt for the week so that's nice but that is oh those are the weeks that is it there so um We'll enter the forecastle. No fish to feed them. So sad. Just keep pedal pedaling them. Petting them. Head down. Oh, grips. Robin Shaw, I recognize that name somewhere. Royal Admiral right? Did you serve? Yes, I did. I think we served on some of the same ships. You probably wouldn't have seen me though. Didn't get much time out of the engineering room. Good to know the new captain has some experience. Thank you. Let's go check on the doctor. Ah, he's the doctor. Enter the ship's infirmary. The presence seems to startle the young man inside. The rattle dropped forceps ringing through the room. Oh, goodness, it's you. Um, captain now, isn't it? Captain Ramshaw, it's good to meet you. Aha. Uh -huh. Dr. Arthur um, Nutley. Dr. Nutley. Dr. Arthur Nutley, that's it. It's good to meet you, Arthur. He has a weak smile. Thank you. It's good to be properly meet you. I suppose I seem a little scatterbrained at the moment. It isn't the norm. Recent circumstances have been trying, and the inclination towards seasickness is no help. Um, June. The steam burns they suffered from the furnace are severe. If you let me take a look, I can do my best to alleviate their pain. Uh, do you have any experience with something like this? 
Oh, come on. Well, I've read extensively on the matter, but as far as first-hand experience goes, well, no. This is my first encounter. At this point, all we can do is wait. That's out a nervous cough. Captain Hunt, he, do you think he may still be out there? There's a chance, however slim. Right. Perhaps we'll run into him again? Um, no, that's ridiculous. Never mind. Apologies, I'm rambling. Okay, well, I was, didn't think that that would make his loyalty drop, so that kind of sucks. They seem to be faring well, all things considered. I suppose you could say that. Mostly scrapes and scuffs. As for the dogs, you're better asking, um, ah, uh, well, the kennel master. You mean Cordell? Yes. I'm taking well to the dogs. I'm unsure how to carry myself amidst people, and animals are quicker to judge. Cordell herself is harsher still. You rely on me on human medical issues. Is everything, um, good? I mean, is someone coming to rescue us? Don't lie, we're in a difficult situation here. I'm going to need your help. Well, there we go. Then you can count on my help. Is there anything I can do for you? Yeah, well. Command to rest. I'm going to ask some scientists to... try and get some of this stuff. That would be good. If you give me these, I can get the crew back on their feet. Is there anything else I can do? Nope. Nice. So we get some stuff that can restore the crew, which is great. There's Kasha there. Officer, uh, Captain Shaw. I suppose I should get used to calling you that. I was asking the crew if anyone had seen Hunt or any of the deserters last night, not a single soul. I know the man knows the ship well, but that seems odd. I suppose you weren't expecting a situation like this as a civilian. You think the crew could be lying? I wouldn't accuse anyone of that, but it's very unlikely he wasn't seen by anyone. I suppose the boiler troubles caused a great deal of distraction. Agreed. Okay, so nobody's in there. Um, I'd like to get some people on this. And then we'll head down because we do need pretty well the rest of the people getting this. Um, everybody else, engineer getting coal makes sense. Come down to the depths, or have he? She goes, so do we. Okay. And nothing here. So, the hoosh pot. Best make use of this kitchen while we can. Okay, so we have a few things. We actually have one, two, three. There we go. That should be good. Let's call them for dinner. The crew have their meal. Har! Shall we give a toast to our new captain? Here, here. The crew return to the post. The hammocks are unfurled and prepped for the next evening. Despite the time, it's still bright light outside. Okay. You're a tall one, aren't you? Oh, thank you for noticing. Been this way since I was 15. You ever considered doing films? You have the stature for it. Oh, I can't act. Acting isn't part of it. You stand there, cut a nice silhouette, you'd be a star. That sounds awfully easy, doesn't it? It can be. Looks like we'll be trapped here for a while. Hi. I don't like the ship's chances either. It'll be some time before we see home. I'm gonna die of boredom out here before we the cold takes me. You'll manage, I'm sure. So tired. You'll get used to it, lad. Dad, it's far too much work. Thought you wanted the work. If I can do it with one arm, you can do it. You're always saying that. It's true. Evening, Shaw. 
proud of what I've been able to cook up for the crew lately, considering the rations, so I do wish we had something better to work with. Kill for a good beefsteak. You do excellent work, Junior. You have a knack for this. I've been told. Hunt would say he couldn't eat a bite that wasn't prepared by me anymore. Should hit the hay or well the hammock. I guess there's hay there. Hmm. Do you need me for something? The crew seems to like you. I wondered if you had any advice on staying the, on their good side. Junior's better with people. I don't know. Be good to them. That's all it takes. He stares at you before nodding to towards his hammock. I mean, he's not wrong. Be good to people, and they'll be good to you. Bloody cold, isn't it, Captain? Don't know how you spend your time away from the furnace. You're all used to it. You're used to the warmth of the furnace, I take it. <laughs> It'd be even colder without your hard work, Hammond. I, I know. Okay. Head to the top. See what we have here. Awfully loud, aren't they? I don't like. I don't mind it all that much. It worked hard all day. They're owed their leisure. Those sailors ought to remember. We all need our sleep. Not wrong. Hey, Kurt. Evening, Shaw. Cold one, isn't it? I used to think I was growing used to this cold, but as the years gone on, the elements have only grown harsher to the body. To be expected, <laughs> Kurt. You're getting old. Imagine this is a harsh area you've ever faced. You'd be surprised, Captain. I have to tell you of a few bad scrapes in my time. I bet. Templeton's room. Good evening, Captain. It'll be some time before we see rescue. Perhaps you should be endearing yourself to the crew. Um. For now, I'd like to learn more of you. You needn't do that. Oh, really? I would prefer to continue with our work. Fostering personal relationships is not a concern. Well, then. Fine. Rude. Kent Shaw, I presume you're here to see the dogs? Yes, how are they faring? They've already acclimatized, though recently they've been exhausted and in need of rest. No surprise, our conditions keep changing. They grow used to one state before being thrust into another. One refuses to eat, and they've been losing weight rapidly. I assume the change in scenery has affected it. They need the rest just as any person. They tend to be more reliable, however. So you prefer dogs to people? <laughs> is that unusual? I suppose it is in a way. Though I cannot be blamed for that judgment, surely. Captain Shaw, you recall my conditions with Hunt, do you not? Like it was yesterday. My demand was that I work here with the dogs. Your people may help with the sleds, but they're not my responsibility, they're not my people. Holding up my promise with Hunt, I do not intend to join your crew. The dog besides her barks. If I get lost in the ice, you're the next Captain Stanbury. Woof. Correo smiles, confused. Animal looks at you. Give him the Captain's hat. <laughs> That's pretty cute. They become excited. Before tearing the hat to pieces. Oh, well, Stanberry. <laughs> well, that's probably not great. But that's fine. It was funny. It was worth it. All in all, it was worth it. Okay, so we've done enough stuff so we can actually end the week here. Which we will. Crew members will be cured of their malnourishment, cured of their freezing. Yeah, we're going to do normal and normal, because we can do it. Um, there we go. Two crab eater seals, 14 available. Dogs arrested and ready to be sent out. Cavity was cured of his wounds. Another week on the ice, the ship holds barely. So that's pretty good. That means we have extra, just extra stuff to use, which is great. Um, and we'll be ending the episode here. So that's been that's been pretty awesome. Uh, this game has been quite fun. Um, some certain things I think with the 
when you're talking to the people and getting the minus loyalty is uh, a little off-putting because sometimes it doesn't seem that way, but it's also hard to gauge sarcasm in written form, so that could be the, some of the reasons why. But all in all, I'm having a blast playing this, so hope you're enjoying as well, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.